Hello, welcome back to another video. If you're new here, hi, my name is Ollie. I'm a writer. I'm currently writing my first full length novel, which is an epic science fantasy story. I thought I'd give a bit of an update today as it's been a little while since I've done one of these, uh, maybe a couple of weeks, three weeks, something like that. Um, so yeah, sorry about that. Before I get to that point now, I just want to mention, cause it's been on my mind since I got back last night, but we went to see the new Dune film last night, Dune 2, part two, and oh my God, if you haven't seen it, just go pause this video and go and watch it because it's just amazing. One of the best things I've ever seen in the cinema. Just really, really good. I won't talk about it too much, not give any spoilers or anything, but it was one of those experiences, you know, when you go and see something that just inspires you so much. And, you know, while my story, what I'm writing, is it's it's very different to Dune. Just the fact that something is so committed to its own world that it's invented and for it to resonate on so many really deep levels i just found it really inspiring and the music's amazing and it just looks great it just kind of flew by it was like two and a half hours i think something like that but i couldn't believe it ended when it did because i thought there was like another hour to go but it was just so great so satisfying and especially because you know i've had a bit of a tough time with this part of the story that i'm on at the moment recently uh, which i'll talk about in a sec but just seeing something like this it was like exactly the kind of thing that i needed to see because it was just so inspiring and gave me some real sort of energy and like a boost to just kind of get going and try and solve all the problems in my story well i say problems it's not that dramatic as i said in the last couple of videos i've found sort of this middle section sort of the last half of the story that i'm on now I found that quite difficult because of the change in tone and what's going on. So that's what I've been kind of struggling with. In the last video, I spoke about how I'd been using a typewriter to try and change up my routine a little bit and try and get the creative juices flowing again. And that did work to a certain extent. And I did sort of get writing again. But especially in the last week or so, I think, I've realized that I really need to have a better understanding of where the story is going. And I know this is kind of me betraying my pantser roots here but I kind of feel like I need some kind of plan on which I can hang the story. So that's kind of what I've been doing the last few days. And I think I have a pretty good outline of the last half of the story. Now it's kind of weird because I've talked before on how I am I really believe in figuring it out as you're typing it. While I still definitely believe that, and there is room for me to, to do that in this plan, I just feel like I'm so far into the story now and there's so much going on and quite a lot of characters, it turns out, more than I thought there were going to be. I can't really keep track of it while I'm just in the moment now. And I really need to just have something I can refer back to. That's what I've done. And at the moment, the plan consists of a few pages of just blocks of text. So it's not particularly visually friendly, but it is a plan. And I think I'm quite happy with it. Now, I, I especially thought I needed a plan like this because my goal is still to have this first draft finished by the end of March, which is looking more and more ambitious, shall we say, <laughs> uh, as the days go by. We're suddenly sort of mid-March now, and I am not close to finishing. Another question that I found myself asking, which I wasn't really expecting, was how fantasy to make the story if that makes sense. I wanted this story, while it is a fantasy, it's a science fiction, science fantasy story, I wanted it to still feel very kind of grounded and I guess relatable and still very human, but it is on another planet, another time. There's kind of magical elements in it. It's kind of mysterious, but it's, you know, it functions as magic in the world. And while, especially while I was making a plan for the second half for the, over the last few days, there are these kind of fantasy elements which have jumped out at me, which I wasn't planning on putting in, but I think kind of work quite well. We'll see as I'm writing it whether it does. But there's a core sort of, I guess, kind of magical, for want of a better word, principle or mechanism behind the world of the story, which is where the story, you know, is generated from. It's a lot of the lore of the world is centered on this, on this sort of mystical mystical quality. There's a lot of sort of storytelling opportunities which are cropping up as I'm writing it, which stem naturally from the magic in the world. And more importantly, I think actually move the story on in quite an interesting way and maybe an unexpected way. I keep having to remind myself, this is the first draft. So I've just decided to just kind of run with it and see where it goes and not worry if it's too fantasy or too, you know, unbelievable. I'm just re reminding myself that it's set on another world and it's a first draft 
not to worry too much about it and kind of just see where it goes. So yeah, while the first half of this story was written as a fully signed up member of the Pants Club, I am a full pantser, um, the second half, it turns out, is kind of more written along, I guess you'd say, the snowflake method, which I don't know a huge amount about, but as far as I understand it, the snowflake method is when you start your story with a sort of single line or idea, and then you sort of naturally grow out from that idea. So you're not writing it in a linear way. You have characters or or ideas or like one line synopses, synopsises, synopses. Um, and the story just kind of naturally grows from that. And you can kind of like write bits here and there, which sort of grow together and overlap and expand. By the end, you have a full story. That's the idea, I think. If I'm wrong, comment below. But yeah, so the second half of the story, I'm kind of using that kind of method. So it's kind of interesting to see whether the first half and the second half of this story, the first draft of this at least, whether those two halves will feel any different when I'm reading back on it. Yeah, we'll see. But anyway, I do have lots to do. So as well as my actual, you know, job work, there's a lot of writing to do. So I'm going to go and finish some work that I was already doing, and then I'm going to crack on with writing. I'll probably head out to do some writing. As you know, I love to do that. So yeah, I think it's time to just get on with that. I realize I've been doing a lot of this in this video. Maybe I always do that. I don't know. I just, I haven't spoken to the camera in a couple of weeks, so maybe I'm overcompensating. I don't know. Anyway, let's get going. <laughs> Just got back. That's weird lighting. Hold on. Oh. Okay, just got back. Yeah, so that was kind of similar to other writing sessions I've had recently because because I didn't really write much in the actual draft itself. What I'm finding with this, like I was saying before, with this sort of snowflake method of, of planning, I'm kind of building my outline out. And this probably sounds really obvious to everyone out there who already plans their stories, but this is kind of I've never done it this way before, so it's kind of new to me. Because I don't have long left before my deadline of the end of March, I kind of really want to have as detailed a plan as possible because I just want to be organised about it, you know. So as I was saying before, I have those pages of just blocks of writing, which is the outline for the rest of the story. Um, and what I was just doing just then was I was splitting that sort of block of writing up into three acts, basically, which will cover the last part of this book. So what I've just been doing, basically, is I split all of that writing into literally scenes, scene by scene, of how I see the rest of the book unfolding, basically. Which, believe it or not, I've never done before. And I actually found it really, really useful. Maybe it's just because I'm at that point where I just need to have some kind of framework, some kind of skeleton, because there's just so much meat <laughs> to this uh, story that I need some skeleton inside that meat. But you know what I mean. But that's gone really well. And I, I've basically finished doing that. I had to leave because they closed. But I basically finished doing that almost up to the end. I suddenly realised there was a whole major plot point about the ending that I had never even considered, uh, which came up because I'm doing this plan, which I think if I was just pantsing the whole thing would have really thrown me for a loop because I would have thought I'd have to go back and change loads of the story. But I'm sort of catching it early, which is really good. <laughs> this all sounds really obvious stuff. Oh, this is why you plan a story. But like, I've never done that before, so I can see the benefits now. And I'll probably be doing it in the future. But I definitely think pantsing is a good way to start a story. Yeah, mixtures of techniques, I guess. I think I'll leave it there for now. Just a quick update. I'm sorry for leaving it so long between videos again. I have a video in the works, which is kind of different to the videos I've been doing so far. It's kind of a history kind of video about historic writers. I don't know how that's going to turn out, and I hope you like it. But uh, yeah, that's coming up soon. So subscribe for more of these writing updates to do with my, my new book. Echoes Reach, it's called, in case I didn't say that earlier. So subscribe for those, and also subscribe for new kinds of videos coming up. Yeah, exciting things in the future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.